Peter chapter 3. We've been talking about submission and the sovereignty of God. In a quick review, last week we talked about the risk. Oh, I can the risk of being submissive. And we talked a lot about how it is not it is not an easy thing. And I like our description. I want you to keep this in your mind. We described, we asked ourselves in a discussion, what is it like in a situation, for example, in a marriage where there's no submissiveness going on? And we described things like chaos, disunity, stress, depression, no, lack of joy, unhappiness. We described a lot of things, a lot of trouble in a marriage where there is not submission. And guess what? Remember Peter's examples. The same applies to government, civil authority. The same applies to our job relationship. If you are not submissive at your job, you're going to suffer. You're just going to be, feel miserable because we're not connecting to God's way, God's methods of doing things and experiencing the joy of God's blessing when we are submitting to God because ultimately that's the point Peter's making. When we submit in marriage, when we submit at our job, and when we submit to civil authority, we are submitting actually to God, not them. We're <coughs> the beneficiaries. That's the way I always put it. Whoever you're submitting to is a beneficiary of your submission to God. And so we need to start embracing God's way, but God's way has become foreign to us in our society. Our culture is constantly pushing the other way. Next week, and they're funny, let's, I'm going to be the first one to admit, we're going to look at some videos that show men in their role as childish, immature, irresponsible, and start watching your commercials on TV, and you'll see how men are portrayed. And I have to admit, I laugh. They're funny. But then they're really not, because they are sending a message that has molded the very character of Christian men to the point where I see a lot. I, I I have talked to some kids. They throw up their hands. They don't. They don't even know their role anymore. It's so confusing. And because they feel like if they fulfill their role according to God, then they're facing just opposition everywhere including in their own home and their, with their own friends. Think about it in a sense of a marriage. Men feel like they're facing opposition sometimes, even from their own wives. And they can't feel that way. That's why we're talking about both pieces of the marriage here and relating it back into the job and back into the, into the civil authorities. So, let's look at this thing. But next week we'll look at the men, we'll look at some videos, and, and take a take a, a, as a sneak peek that remember the church is the bride of Christ right is that correct mm -hmm. yes. and in that picture the man has the role of Christ in that picture of marriage and the women have the role of the church we have to start men have to start embracing the, the, the position of acting like Christ being total you know the whole idea of Christian is to be Christ like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And do we understand the impact of Paul's statement? Paul was basically saying, I am not afraid to say that I'm trying to live like Christ. And I'm not, a willing, I'm not afraid to put myself out there, says Paul, and say, I will be an example. Paul understood he had problems. Paul understood he made mistakes. Remember, he talks about it. He's like, he says, the very things I want to do, I don't find myself doing. I, I find myself not doing. The very things that I don't want to do, those are the things I'm doing. He said, this conflict was always with Paul. But had, he still was not afraid to say, I will be Christ-like. I will be the example. Follow me. That's what we need in the male world. And so we have to recapture it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that next week. Today, we're going to look at these aspects. Biblical, how to be biblically submissive. We say all the time in church, women be submissive to their husbands. We love to say that, but we don't say how. And so women are left wondering, think about it. When you hear a statement like that, women be submissive to your husbands, 
we in our nature take that thought and we have to attach it to something, right? Think about it. We attach it to usually experience and knowledge. Well, if we don't understand God's word, and we're not in God's word, we have nothing to attach it to. That's a big part of our problem, is being back in the word, knowing God's word. Same thing for the men. You can't be Christ-like if you don't know the word, because you have nothing to attach that thought to, that concept to. So you can't say, it's like this. I don't have anything to go on. So ladies, we need to attach it to something. Luckily, Peter is attaching how to be submissive to something concrete that we can look at and we can say, okay, I'm getting a better picture now. Because we're, we're basically trying to fend off your what, what we call your worldview. Remember what your worldview is. Your worldview is everything in life that has created a perception in your life. And how you were, how you grew up, all the experiences you've had, all the accumulation of knowledge you have, this creates a worldview. And that worldview a lot of times competes against God and His truth. You have this worldview that, that sometimes will attack God's view. At Malone, I see that a lot. At Christian University, I'm in class and we have a biblical concept and the class, the teacher will ask the class if they agree with it or not, and most of them disagree with with simple concepts because culture has remolded our thinking pattern so much that we just can't we can't grasp it, and we can, and we actually start calling the way God wants to do something wrong, and that's what this is. Submissive is not a good word anymore. It's a it's, it's a negative concept for us to engage and to consider. So, let's talk about it this morning. Look at chapter 3. Let's read our text. And as I'm reading, listen to the way Peter describes this idea of being submissive. Chapter 3, verse 1. Wives, in the same way, be submissive to your husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the, the purity and reverence of your lives. In the same way as, remember we said, wives in the same way as you would submit at work, in the same way as you would have submit to civil authority, submit to your husbands so that you may win them over. Now, now the text is addressing an unsaved husband, but does it still apply in marriage between a Christian husband and a Christian wife? Yes, it still applies. It's still an issue. So we can look at it both ways. Verse 3. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair, the wearing of gold jewelry, and fine clothes. Let me put a little parenthesis in there. Alone. Not just that. Is there anything wrong with that? No. But don't rely on that to change it. Put it this way, you can dress up all, you can dress up as nice as you want. But if you don't submit the way God's the way he does, it doesn't matter. It's not going to help. Too much loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Verse 4, instead of this outward adornment, he says, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called her master. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Verse 7, husbands, in the same way be considerate, as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life. And, and by the way, women don't like that weaker partner comment. Um, we'll have to look at that. So that nothing will be, nothing will hinder your prayers. I don't like that phrase. It, to me, it's a protective thing. And I, I think that it's a 
again, look at your culture, look at your, again, go right into your commercials. The woman was portrayed as powerful, as strong, as intelligent, and mature, you know. And uh, I'll just, I've been, I told a couple people about this video. Here's, here's one of the videos, I don't know if I'll show it or not. But I was looking at some videos on TV, uh, on the computer, and this guy standing in front of the camera, and the way it's put together is the guy's filming himself. And he goes, this is what men do when the, when the wives are away. And he grabs his little eight-year-old daughter, eight year old daughter's hand, and he walks down the driveway, and turns, and he goes out of the picture. His 10-year-old son standing in front of the video just smiling. Yeah. And, then he, and then he goes, he's just like, look. Oh. And he walks over, and he lays down in the middle of the street. And I'm like, okay, what in the world is going on? And then all of a sudden, in the background, you hear this rum, rum, this car revving up. And then you hear the squeal of the tires, and here he comes. And here comes Dad in this big 4x4 four four that's way up high off the ground. And he, of course, he's, he goes right over, over the sun, right? So the sun just sort of goes right beneath the tires. And he goes right over the sun. And on the hood is the little girl standing up going, <laughs> and he goes zooming by, and then the kid gets up, walks back to the camera, and goes, and it ends. And I'm like, see, immature, stupid, irresponsible. That's the way it's portrayed. And so with that pattern, women don't like the idea of seeing weaker. I know what you mean, but women need to see their position. Their, God designed a woman for a role and a man for a role, and this is the way it is. Again, this is sovereignty of God. But what I want to look at, mostly next week, for example, man, we say the man's the leader of the house. Question, should the man control the bank account? Because he's the leader. Is that a male role responsibility? Whoever's the best with it. Right, it's not a male role responsibility. Right? It's a responsibility within the house. I teach on that all the time because I counsel people that. Right? The male is responsible for making it happen, but if the wife happens to be the one that has all the knowledge and all the skill and all the ability, then be my guest. Right. right? He is still responsible, all right? But all he has to say is, hey, wifey, you got this handled? Yeah. Okay. And it's done. See, the man is responsible for the outcome. But he can yield. It, it works fine. Like over the years, we've had some new teaching on this, and there's so many women that are afraid that they're going to be doormats. And if it's in the biblical realm, you're not a doormat. You are, they're honoring, because it even says he honors the wife. And then the, the response is that you want it. I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful picture of a unity together. But, you know, they, the, the culture has distorted it. So she's a doormat. And, you know, this dominant, um, you know, you do this, that. And that's not the case at all. It is a beautiful unity. But it takes part of the man to take that godly role. And the woman takes her role too. So. Right. I mean, is anybody better than Jesus at finances? I mean, when Jesus needed to pay his taxes, he just pulled it out of fish's mouth. <laughs> was Jesus the treasurer of his of no. disciples? No. He delegated. Now you would say, why did you Jesus. delegate it to Jesus? Jesus was treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> but even that was part of a bigger plan. But you see the idea. There's a there's a there's a unity to become one. And we're forgetting that, and we, we keep showing these two separate entities clashing instead of being together. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's look at how to be biblically submissive. Okay, verse one. First of all, Peter says you will win them over in an unsafe condition, but we can apply it to the both in a Christian marriage too to win them over, meaning you can be submissive and be in your role without words, but by behavior, okay? And then he clarifies that in the very next verse. He says that behavior is described as a behavior of purity and reverence of your life. Purity and reverence, okay? So less words, more action, says Peter. And I'm not saying, it's not about nagging, la, 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 la. We're not talking about that. Let's not get into all those 
those preconceived ideas of problems in a marriage. Let's talk about a good marriage. Less words. Why would he say less words and more action, first of all? What's the action point in less loud. words? What's that? Action speaks way louder than words. Yeah, the, it really does. Showing your love always exceeds telling someone you love them. Actions come from the heart. Actions do come from the heart. You see a genuineness, right? And that's why Peter hits this. Purity. Actions reveal the purity of the words. He's not saying don't talk. But he's saying the actions are more important <coughs> because they reveal the truth of the words. I love you, I say to my wife. If all I do is say it and I never show it, the words lose their value. What, she, what my wife needs to see is something in action coming from the heart. That, that purifies no fake stuff in there. No, what's the word, uh, preservatives. <laughs> so, yes. so there's less chance of being a hypocrite the less you speak. True. And the more you show. So how does a person show by action the purity? OK, we said comes from your heart. OK, what are examples? You're in a good marriage, and you want to, you, uh, let's say, uh, ladies, you're in the room here. Help, help us out here. If a woman wants to show her husband that she's being submissive, that he's the leader, and she wants to, sh she wants to be encouraging and show trust and everything, how does she just show that by action? With a pure heart. What action? For example. What would be an example of activity? Ready on time. Huh? <laughs> Ready on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's true. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Well, see, if you have a husband that wants to be like, that, that's got a little thing about being on time, it's like, <laughs> I used to tease about Amy's dad. Amy's mom used to say this all the time. He'd get dressed, and he'd go sit in the car. She, well, in the meantime, she had to get herself dressed and all the kids dressed. And took no more. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that's, that, that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, there, you know, internet now is actually breaking out marriages. And what are you, today, like, what are you visiting on the internet? There's women that start talking to men on the internet. I mean, that that's pretty flagrant, but, you know, like, always wanting to see him because this guy's in it and, you know, he's such a hunk. And, you know, there's so many ways that we can break down our husbands today. And maybe not even uh, in our, we're not thinking we need to, but, you know, hearing women talk together and stuff, you know, that are, are in the world and, um, and, and the magazines that are on the table at work and, you know, that kind of thing. It's just, it's just amazing. And we're just, we're just, some of us, are just buying in, into it, you know, like that, that that's a, a way of life. And, you know, we build our husband up, we're pure in heart, we keep ourselves for him, not only in what we do, but what we're thinking about, what we're looking at, what who we're talking to, you know, I mean, all that kind of stuff. Remember, to be submissive, the, I, the concept of submissive is to say, I'm yielding to your authority, okay? And so, think about how does a woman show it. How does a woman show she's yielding to a man's authority, her husband's authority? I know, um, you know, Fred would work really hard, and when he'd come home, he'd be really tired. I used to read, I, I liked to read, and uh, he didn't like me reading, but he wanted me to, like, rub his head, or, you know, massage him, or whatever, because, you know, he worked hard, and so <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I, you know, <laughs> I wanted to read, <laughs> but I, I didn't because, you know, he wanted that time. And um, we had a dog one time. He didn't even like the dog because, you know, it took away my time with him. And, and that's what he wanted was, was some time. And, uh, and I think also I always had a meal when he came home. And uh, when the kids were home, we ate as a family. Uh, we always ate as a family. And um, I think that was really important for our home. And what you'll notice is, now, between you and Ferd, that's what worked for you. Mm -hmm. There will be, a, see, another woman in a different circumstance will look at that and go, oh, 
No way, I'm not doing that. See, they get offended by that. Like if a woman says, I like to clean the house for my husband. <gasps> he should be cleaning the house. Every situation is different. And husbands and wives, because they come together as one, they learn about each other's, they understand one another, and, they, and you actively seek out what are those things that I can do to show this idea of submissiveness. So what works for one person may not work at all in another situation. So don't look at someone else's situation and say, oh, I hate doing that, and I don't even admit it. You didn't really like necessarily doing it, but, you, but that's the idea of submissiveness, yielding. Okay? And then, my daughter-in-law, uh, uh, one year, uh, my son, he liked to decorate, and she made a sign and with the kids and put it out front. As he pulled in the driveway, it said, thanks, Dad and honey, for decorating our house. Uh, men, of course, a lot of men, that's their love language. And I think we have to find the love language of our husband, and, and they have to find our love language. Because um, my, both my kids, I mean, and, and for uh, affirmation was, was their love language. And they constantly wanted to be affirmed of, of the things that they did. So. It's true. It's true. You need to understand how they, how they work and, and help that. I'm reading the Amplified Version, again, where it says to be submissive. It says to subordinate yourselves as being secondary to and dependent on them and adapt yourselves to them. So you adapt yourself to your own husband. Right. To what he needs and what his wants are. So you adapt. And think about it. Is that any different than how we approach God? Do we do the same thing towards God? Mm -hmm. we, we're subordinate to God. That's the picture Peter's trying to paint. Is This is all done to God. As a matter of fact, look at this. These two words are to God. Not the husband. The purity and reverence is to God. But the husband is the beneficiary of it, of the action. And that's what I was going to say. It comes down to your attitude and your walk with God. And it should be every single thing that you do. When you're at the grocery store and they give you too much change, are you going back and giving it back because that was wrong? Um, are you kind to people, not just your husband, to everybody around you? All those um, fruit of the Spirit that we should have, um, they should see that. And it's, you know, um, and putting your husband.